Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you the basics of how to work with integrals. We're going to take a look at the meaning of an integral and how to calculate it. This is an integral here, so this symbol here tells us this is an integral. These are the limits, so my integral starts at 0 and goes up to 1. This inside here is my function, and then I close the integral with a dx, which tells me that x is my variable, that is my x in here. Before we calculate this specific example, let's take a look at the meaning of an integral. We can use integrals to calculate areas areas between a function and the x-axis. So for example, if you want to find the area from 0 to 4, let's say, between my function here, my red function, and the x-axis, so this area here, if you want to find the, the size of this area, you can use an integral. But you might say, why should we use an integral? This is just a, a triangle. <laughs> we can use the normal formula that we know for a triangle. So base times height divided by 2. My base here is of length 4. The same for my height, which is of length 4. 4 here as well. So if I insert 4 for the base, and in this case 4 as well for the height, I get an area of 4 times 4, which equals 16, over 2 equals 8. So why should I need integrals to find this area? Well, not for this area, actually. <laughs> that is true. That is such an easy function here that we don't need integrals. We could use the formula for a triangle as well. But let's say your function doesn't look like this red one, but maybe like this. And we want to find the area in here between our function and the x-axis then it is a little bit more difficult. So that is why we need integrals in the end. But I want to show you this specific example as well, using an integral actually. And let's see if we get the result of 8 as well, if we use an integral. We want to find this area here between this function and the x-axis, starting at 0 and going up to 4. We want to use an integral this time. We know already on the x-axis we want to go from 0 to 4, so these are our limits from 0 to 4. How does my function look like? Well, this is just this line here, so if I call it f of x, my function is just x, so this is what goes into my integral, and then we've already seen that we always have to close an integral with this dx again. And now we only have to calculate this integral. And this goes as follows. We have to find the antiderivative of our function here. We write these brackets and take our limits 0 to 4 and write them here. Some people don't use these brackets, they just use a line like this, but you can just use <laughs> what you should use. Uh, I'm going to use these brackets. Um, and then we need the antiderivative of this function. So what you already know is how to differentiate, probably. So usually you start at x to the power of 3, let's say, just an example, and you want to find the derivative, and then the rule is, oh, I take the exponent and multiply it by x to the power of, and then you 
decrease your exponent by one and make it a two. This is the derivative. But now we need the antiderivative. So from here, going back to the origin. And usually you're super confused at the beginning because you're so used to differentiating things and now you have to do the other way around. So it needs a little bit of time to get used to this cycle here. Uh, but yeah, we need the antiderivative and there is a rule as well how to find it of such simple functions. We have an exponent of one here. First of all, we're going to increase the exponent now. So we write it as x to the power of two instead of the one. And in front, I'm going to write a fraction. My new exponent is what I'm going to write down here. And in the numerator, I have to write down the number that was in front of my x before. We don't see a number here right now. That means that it is a one time. So I take the one and write it here in the numerator. And this is my antiderivative of this function. And as soon as you've done that, we can insert the limits now. We always start with the upper limit and insert it for every x that we have in here. So we have one half times, and instead of the x, we're going to write the four. So four to the power of two. And then when we're done with the upper limit, we always write a minus and do the same thing with this limit now. So we're going to write everything down, but instead of the x, we're going to insert the zero this time and square it as well. And now we only have to calculate this and hope that we get the same result as we've just got with the triangle. So 4 squared equals 16. Uh, 16 over 2 equals 8 minus, and this part equals 0, so we don't have to subtract anything. 8 is our area here. That was the same <laughs> that we got here. So with this easy function, you could use the formula for a triangle, or you could get used to using uh, integrals, because things get more complicated, of course, and then we cannot use triangle or our other geometric figures anymore. So let's go back to our example here from the beginning. And before we calculate it, maybe let's take a look at what this specific integral means first. We can take this function that is inside my integral and let's graph it in a coordinate system. So we take the 4x squared, which is a parabola if we graph it. I'm going to write down f of x here. So that is our function 4x squared. That is always the function we work with. And if we want to find this integral, we have the limits from 0 to 1. So on the x-axis, we have to go from 0 to 1. And then we want to find with this integral the area between our red function from 0 to 1 here and up to our graph. So this is going to be this area here, which looks a little bit nicer in this version here. So from 1 to 0 here and between our graph and the x-axis. This is what this integral means. And let's calculate this area then. We know that we have to find the antiderivative. Limits are from 0 to 1. And what is the rule again for the antiderivative? We're going to increase our exponent first. So instead of x to the power of 2, we're going to have x to the power of 3. Then in front, we're going to write a fraction. 
take our new exponent and write it down here. And on top, we're going to write the number that was in front of our x part. So the 4 goes on top here. This is my antiderivative of this function. And now I only have to insert the limits. I start with the upper limit and insert for every x that I have in here my 1. So for this x I'm going to insert the 1 so that I have 4 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3. Then I'm done with my upper limit and I do the same thing with my other limit here but in between I'm always going to write a minus. And then I write down everything else and as soon as I get an x I'm going to insert a 0 here and raise it to the power of 3. Okay, let's calculate this. 1 to the power of 3 just equals 1 times 1. I don't need that so I only have 4 over 3 minus this thing here gets 0. So this is my result of this integral and 4 over 3 is the size of this specific area. I hope it helped you and you learned a little bit more about integrals. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!